Uh, Rabbi Weiss is going to, uh, I'm Marty Boyd, who is friends of Seville. Uh, Rabbi Weiss is going to speak for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll open it up to um, talk back, questions and answers, that kind of thing. Okay? Go from that way. Thank you. With the help of the Almighty, I pray to the Almighty to bestow upon me his truth, his wisdom, uh, that I may be worthy of conveying his message and uh, sanctifying his name, and with God's help, inshallah, bring peace to this world of his. Uh, thank you very much. I thank the organizers, Leil and uh, friends of Sabil. Thank you, and uh, everybody who is involved here. And, um, I'm very thankful for this the Muslim Center here in the mosque for giving uh, their permission, their gracious permission to have me here. I know that there was very many difficulties and there's uh, a lot of intimidation. Uh, so I really thank everybody involved in it and, and we forgive the ones who are uh, intimidated. We understand there's many, many people uh, from even from our faith, I mean, unfortunately, I can say the, uh, the majority of the Jewish, from the Jewish faith are constantly being intimidated by the Zionist representatives in, in every part of the world, in, and especially in Palestine, as with God's help, I will show you a little later that as we're standing here, I have colleagues who are imprisoned, none of my colleagues or associates or anybody who follows the faith truly. We are not militant. Uh, we simply peacefully go out and do what is required of us by the Almighty, which is to speak up and to sanctify God's name, to tell the truth. And doing so, uh, the Zionists come, they brutally beat my colleagues. Uh, there's many pictures. You can look at our site, which is www.nkusa. That could, this is ongoing for over a hundred years since Zionism started before the state of Israel started. And till today, people stand up every day, every week. They go out, they demonstrate, they cry, they speak up and say, this is not us, this is not in our name, this is not Judaism. We have no right to occupy another people. We have no right to have a state, as I will with God's help explain. And they get for that their reward. Uh, from God is great, and the reward from the Zionists is, is being uh, brutally beaten, arrested, and sometimes killed. Uh, so, uh, we understand fully why, what the pressure it is for people to, uh, to, to open their doors to let our message be heard. Uh, that being said, especially God bless those who are not intimidated and, uh, and stood up to this and we hope, with God's help in the future, that we should be able to come to celebrate a free Palestine totally with everybody with, uh, being fearful of all these, uh, these evil um, uh, messengers uh, who are trying to uh, actually uh, be an impediment to the word of God and the name of God, which is peace. So assalamu alaikum, peace to all you. Thank you very much for coming. I think I have to really clarify something. I'm not coming with my message or my colleague's message. I'm simply coming here, as we like to say in Judaism, there's an example like a chauffeur. A chauffeur is the horn that you blow. Uh, the chauffeur blows a horn, and on the holidays, it's, it's, uh, one of the, it's a, a very holy mitzvah. It, it's broadcasting some, a message. So the horn isn't the, uh, it's, it's not, the, it comes it's from an animal, it's not the, the greatness of, it's not the greatness of the horn, it's the, uh, it's a message, it's just conveying a message. I'm not here saying my, my words. This is pure, the Torah view, what Judaism is. I'm just going to, in brief, try to explain what Judaism is about, the, the difference between what Judaism is and what you, you to today, think, or uh, many people unfortunately think Judaism is uh, the difference between the relationship that Jewish people had up until a hundred years ago as a given in Muslim and Arab countries and what it is today. 
with God's help. Uh, Judaism is a religion subservient to the Almighty. That's all it is, an acceptance of the commandments given to us on Sinai. To accept the rule of the Almighty that it's God's world and we are to do what he commanded of us. Zionism is a, a mere hundred odd years, a new movement, relatively new, compared Judaism is thousands of years. Zionism just started recently. Uh, Zionism is um, just the, the expression of a people who want to enjoy their whims and in order that it should be dignified and accepted and legitimized, they're simply taking our name, Judaism, and dressing what they're doing in the cloth of Judaism. They're transforming this Judaism that is the subservience to God into a diametric opposite, into, beer, into a mere uh, uh, materialist issue, a nationalism, to have a piece of land, to have an army, to have an Olympic team. And they, they simply call this with the Star of David, Maccabees, all these different Jewish names, they call themselves the State of Israel. This is one of the roots of the called a Nakba, a tragedy. This is, for us, a, tr a terrible tragedy. It's a, 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 a double and triple tragedy because not only is evil being perpetrated against other people, and as I will explain with God's help, against God, against the teachings of the Torah, but all that is being done is being done in the name of Judaism, in the name of the Jewish people, and people think the more religious you are, the more you support what the people, because of, you're very religious, the more religious then you must be more attached to a Jewish state, the state of Israel. And if that's the case, then also besides this rebellion, rebellion against God, you also have the results of this unfortunately endless river of bloodshed, the rift, the mistrust between God's creations around the world. This is not what it's all about. Again, Judaism is one thing and one thing only. The Jewish people stood up on Mount Sinai, accepted the rule of God, to be subservient to God, and followed the teachings of the Torah that is required of us, 613 commandments, the Sabbath, kosher, family, purity, many laws. Um, that said, by the way, um, the time doesn't allow for all these different things, but we believe that every human being is created by God, and if you keep the seven commandments of Noah, that there's one God, uh, not to serve idol worship, not kill, not steal, not to commit adultery, um, and then um, to, to have a, a court system, every country has to have, not to eat from an animal while it's shaking. If you're doing these things, it's Elijah the prophet writes, and in our law books, Maimonides writes, then you will inherit the world to come. You don't have to be Jew Jewish to serve God. And that is the way we Jewish people lived with the other people around the world, and we, and, and we, didn't, we didn't in any manner look at another person and say, you have to be Jewish or else you're not, you can't serve God, you're not good, or anything, God forbid, that wasn't the case. And the, when you read the stories of Abraham, you'll see that, um, all the, but again, time doesn't let it, but this, this is a fact, this is the way the Jewish belief is. There is no argument about that. There is, these in the law books, like Maimonides, the, the Shulchan Aruch, it's called from Yosef Karo. This is, a, across the board, around the world, this is the, what the Judaism is. And uh, this was, we followed for thousands of years, now a few thousand years. Two thousand years ago, there was the destruction of the temple. Now, if you look in the books of the prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, um, Jeremiah, all of the books, they all were busy warning the Jewish people prior to the destruction of the temple over, over 2,000 years ago that they should be careful because they have to be on a very high level of holiness in order to remain in the Holy Land as a nation. Uh, then, the God wasn't satisfied with the Jewish people on that le that the level that they were on, and therefore the destruction of the temple came about around 2,000 years ago. And then we were clearly put under an oath of God, a prophecy by King Solomon. It's all there to say in Shir Hashirim. It says, "I put you under oath, the daughters of Jerusalem, uh, not to awaken uh, with the buck and the deer of the field, not to awaken my love prematurely." And the rabbis explain, and there's no argument about this, that we will put up the three oaths, because this verse is repeated three, three times in King Solomon's prophecies. And they explain that it means we'll up the three oaths. One, after the destruction of the temple, we are not to return in mass, in large numbers, back to the Holy Land. 
Secondly, we are not to rebel against any nation. We should be loyal citizens in every country we are residing. Thirdly, not to make any attempt to end exile. The Jewish people for 2,000 years went through the Crusades, the Inquisition, many, many trials and tribulations, the Second World War, all of this, and we as a Jewish people, yes, it was frustrating, it's hard, but we never question God. God is all compassionate. God is not to be questioned. God is the Almighty. He makes all our DNA. It's impossible to, to, to uh, grasp the greatness of God. And, and so how can we question his deeds and what he does? But well, we know that he's totally all compassionate. But sometimes